Alright, hello YouTube, this is B Hodge. Today we're going to be taking out the T95 and giving my first impressions of what I think of this tank. Overall, from what I've played so far, probably around 40 or so matches, it's a very finicky tank, but I can I can get 5 kill games. I usually average around 3 kills per game. And every once in a while, it's just one of those side shots or weird turret shots that kind of kills me in one shot. Hello. Huh. I shot him right in the turret. So we're starting right off the gate in this gameplay. Oh, that sounds like a rocket. I'm gonna get out of here. So first impressions. Um, ammunition, great. Armor piercing, fin stabilized. Discarding stable is much better than the regular stable round. Mostly because of the uh, the angle of impact, damage, and the uh, just the fragmentation is better. Turret traverse, great. 36 degrees per second, ain't nothing to laugh at. Much better than most of the other American tanks that usually around have around 24 degrees per second. Negative 10 degrees gun depression, I'm pretty sure. And then like 19 degrees, actually no, it's 20 degrees. Uh, Elevation. Armor. Pretty crappy from the sides. But it's very compact. So you get a hundred like ninety-five millimeters front glazes, lower glazes 120, which is decent. It's actually lighter than the Leo, surprisingly enough. This is 38.5 tons, whereas the Leo is 40 tons exact. And you may be thinking to yourself, what, why does it this get up to Leo speeds even faster? Well, that's because of the engine. When they took it through Aberdeen at Proving Grounds, they didn't quite have the X-type engine that they were hoping to get for this tank. So they just strapped a, strapped a 550 horsepower engine onto this and put it through the Proving Grounds. You got a top speed of 56 kilometers per hour, which is, is, is not bad at all, but it's just, it's, it takes time to get up to that speed. Burst speed's decent. I mean, it's it's kind of bad for an American tank. Negative six degrees, uh, or neg negative six kilometers per hour. Please don't kill me. It's actually a very compact tank. The uh, the M60 is about twice the size of this tank. Oh, how was that? Undamaged. Fuck me. I know, right? Ooh, I bounced. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, he has like a 15 second reload time, so I should be able to reload in time. Hopefully, he comes around here. Does it dip down? Hello? Easy fucking peasy. Killed three crewmen. Didn't have to go for the ammo. That's how bit. That's how good the fragmentation on this round is. I'm gonna try and get out of the open, so I don't get hit by rockets. Oh, hello, coming from this side. The tra the, fuck. The traverse is a little weird on this tank because it's such a long haul for a small. It, it's longer than it is wide, so that's why it's kind of weird to traverse this tank. It does get neutral steering, which is nice, but it kind of doesn't help if you're weird shaped. a very nice thing as I can stay underneath here if I was an M60 I'd be poking way over top of that and yeah, the visibility on this tank is 110% compared to like the M60s like I think it's a ludicrous like 171% visibility so you can kind of be sneaky for the for an American tank yes you can be sneaky 
Whereas like the Russians, I think the ASU-57 has like a 60-70% visibility or something like that, something crazy. T-40 is like a 90%. Just because they're so low to the ground. All right, here's smoke popping over here. Oh, hello. Oh, raise that gun, boy. Easy peasy. It's just such an effective round. The amount of fragmentation is similar to that of like the um, M103 and the T-34 ever since they got their buff. I get so fucking afraid every time I hear an IC1. Alright, there's a guy back there. Maybe if it hopefully comes around this corner right here, maybe. No. Couldn't. Alright, yeah, he's going around that way, so I'm gonna follow him through. Also another thing about the uh, the Abiding Grounds. And the reason why War Thunder is kind of weird. Some tanks that were absolute crap when they were going through the Proving Grounds were actually good in War Thunder, say the T-95E1, because the, the gun, it was just not accurate enough for the, uh, the army. And they said it provided not enough of a, an improvement over the M48 to uh to warrant the u.s to buy a whole new tank which it would have been very interesting if we went with the t95 program which by the way the t95 program is nowhere related to the t95 doom turtle because <coughs> that was a sorry about that that was a world war ii project it was used to just get past the nazi lines and shit like that this was a cold war tank Funny enough, we had another Cold War tank idea that was named the T-54. Another weird looking tank. It, it's kind of similar to this in a way. A little bit lower profile. And the one thing I think that this tank excels at is urban type combat. Hello. Because <coughs> the turret traverse is just insanely gr great for a American tank. Similar to that, like the Leo that was in the April Fool's event. The Leo, could, you'd fire at it and it turns turret around before you need the smoke the smoke even dissipates from your gun and just scares the bejeebus out of you when it fires around right fucking a okay yeah the, this, like i said the side armor is crap on this tank so i don't know if they have okay we have our own air so, I will take out an M60. Actually, no. I took an M60 out of my other video. Let's take out the 48. This used to be actually one of my favorite tanks in the whole game before the, uh, the M68 one was announced. <coughs> the heat round was amazing. I just hated the stock grind for this thing because he starts you off with the APCR. And as we all know, the APCR is crap in this game. Honestly, I really hope they buff the ACR, APCR. Not to what it used to be. Yeah, the APCR back when the ground forces first came out, I was using it on my Panzer IV F2 instead of just the regular APHE because it was just far better. It was almost like the Sabre rounds now. But I don't, I don't want it to have that type of what it was before. I want it to. I mean, the damage it's doing is fine. It could be up just a little bit, not too much. But more so just the 
they're really under underperforming compared to what they did in real life. Yeah, the American APCR, like the M332, I think it was called, M304. One of the APCRs for like the Pershing. It's doing about 265 millimeters of penetration. In real life, I had about 330 millimeters of penetration. <clears throat> which I'm sort of sure like all the Sabo rounds are underperforming as well, but they actually do damage, which is nice. And the, um, and I, I think the penetration against angled surfaces is kind of correct. Just, it doesn't have the penetration figures to go behind it. Alright, we just have one person left. This is an easy round. Yeah, like I said, I get three kills per game. Average. And it's amazing to me why they kept the M48 because of the the gun just didn't seem like it would be that effective against like T-54s and stuff like that. But then again, in the Korean War, they were facing pretty much T-34s, APCs, stuff like that instead of T-54s. Because the Koreans didn't have the Soviets to back them up and in time, I guess. They did have the T-54, they just didn't have as many as of them. The amount of American tanks outnumbered them. This is probably my third or fourth game so far of, of me just constantly talking into this microphone because I just can't seem to get a good game when I'm doing live commentary. But this game is pretty much over. Uh, yeah, I will uh, catch y'all in the next video.